Hey everybody, so let's take a look at getting video input into Deforum Stable Diffusion. So I've downloaded a fresh copy of the notebook and I've already run my environment setup and my path setup. And now we're down here in the animation settings. So we're going to use animation mode video input and that will ignore our motion parameters. And here's where we specify the video input file. So you can of course shoot your own videos um, or get them from any source that you want but if you just need some free videos to test this system out pexels.com is a great place to download free videos. Find a video that you like and you can download it in a relatively low resolution format um, 640 by 360, 960 by 540, these would be fine for input into stable diffusion. Download the selected file, save it, and then upload it to your Google Drive. You can see here I've created an inputs folder inside my AI folder, and I've already uploaded this file video.mp4. So back over here, I'm going to open the sidebar of my Colab notebook and go into my drive and find that file that I uploaded. It's an AI inputs video.mp4. I'm going to right click it and copy the path to that file and paste that here. I'm going to extract every frame of the video, so extract nth frame will be set to 1, and I'm going to make sure that overwrite extracted frames is checked for this run. I'm also just going to render 240 frames of this and enter my animation setting. I've already created a prompt. And then here in my image settings, specify my output size, specify my seed. Steps, scale, batch name. Recall that the batch name will create a new folder for this project and save the still frames and the finished video into that folder in my Google Drive. And in this particular case I'm going to change my seed behavior to fixed because if I iterate the seed over every frame I'm going to get a lot of random changes between frames. It's going to lose the coherence of the video. With a fixed seed it'll apply the same seed to every frame. And then the one setting that's important here is even though we're not checking use init in the init settings, the strength is still important. So I'm going to set this to 0.5, 50% influence from our source video to our destination video, and we'll run it and see what it gives us. First, it's got to export the video frames, and see it's exporting them. It tells us it's exporting them into this folder, video test slash input frames. If we take a look over in the Google Drive, we can see it's created this folder called Input Frames and extracted every frame of the video as a JPEG file. And here's its first frame based on the video. So you can see it's strongly influenced by the source video, but also is making a lot of changes to it based on the prompt. So we'll let that run and see what it comes up with. You can see here that it's thrown an error, file not found error. It can't find frame 17. This happens sometimes, and it's just a matter of rerunning 
the animation again so that it re-exports the extracted frames. So I'll go over here and see the frames that it was able to successfully export. And this gives me my batch name. I can right click this to rename the file. I'm not going to rename it. I'm just going to command C to copy the timestamp. Go back over here. Put that timestamp in the resume time string field. Select resume from time string. Rerun my animation settings. Prompts and restart it. It's re exporting the video frames and hopefully this time it won't miss any and then it'll pick up where it left off. And when it's done we can create a video from the frames uh, so making sure that skip re video run for all is unchecked and notice here that I use 12 frames per second even though my source video is actually 24 frames per second. The reason why I'm choosing 12 frame per second output is I find 24 frames per second looks too flickery after it's passed through the AI, so I'm choosing 12 frames per second. What I should have done is here, uh, instead of extracting every frame, I should have extracted every other frame so that I wouldn't get a difference in the speed of the video when I input it at 24 frames per second and output it at 12 frames per second. So the video that I'm going to generate is going to run at half the speed of my input video. For this test application, that's fine. Uh, so I run the video, and that will generate an output file in my video test folder that I can then download, which I've already done, and View. Now sometimes you're going to get a failure here. This create video from frames is not going to work. Uh, so you can use manual settings in order to specify your image path and the output video path. And the way that works is you go into your drive, and find one of your output frames. So here's my output frames. I'm just going to pick one from the run that I want, copy its path, and then here I'm going to take the five-digit frame number that's specified in the path and I'm going to replace it with percent zero five D. And that means take all frames that have a five-digit number after the underscore. And then my MP4 path will be the full path name, and then what I want to save the video file as. Video test dot mp4. And then using these manual settings, I can generate the video even if it failed when I initially tried to run it. And if I refresh this folder, I can see there is my video test.mp4 that I just created by using the manual settings here.